we're uh, here with Tim Hayes, and uh, Tim is running for uh, Montgomery County Constable Precinct 4. And um, uh, as we just discussed with Tim, we're going to give him an uh, opening of up to five minutes, and then we'll go around the table for questions, um, uh, Q&A session. Uh, I'm John Mertz, Vetting Committee Chair. Del Fessenden is next to me, then Brian Crumby. Ken Vaughn, Dennis Tibbs, Pat Tibbs, and Larry Rogers. And with that, I'll turn it over to you for your opening, and then we'll go through the Q&A. Okay. I'm eager to get to your questions. My name is Tim Hayes. I'm running for Constable in Montgomery County Precinct 4. I'll give you a little bit about myself. Is um, from East Montgomery County. I wasn't born there. I was actually born in Corpus Christi, but I've spent almost my entire life in East Montgomery <laughs> County. Went to public schools there from Porter Elementary all the way up to New Caney High School. Where my freshman year of high school, my parents decided to move out to Splendora, and that's where I finished my high school education and graduated in 2004. I currently live in Roman Forest and uh, have a wife and one son. Uh, we attend church at uh, <clears throat> Second Baptist Church in Kingwood. Uh, a little bit more about myself is I've uh, worked for the Harris County Constable's Office for the past seven and a half years. Uh, primary work is an accident reconstructionist, so I work with fatality collisions within our precinct uh, when they call me upon to do that, and, uh, and work traffic enforcement to improve traffic safety and mobility in our area. Uh, I hold an uh, advanced peace officer certification. I obtained my master peace officer certification in 2017, which is the highest level of certification they offer for a Texas peace officer. Uh, also this past year, I graduated from uh, Lamar University with a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice uh, and graduated with highest honors as well, summa cum laude, uh, in addition to my duties as a peace officer, a father, and, uh, and a servant of God. So, <laughs> uh, right now, I'm just really eager to get into y'all's questions and everything, so uh, that's about all I have for that. So I'll open it up for you guys to ask me any questions you have. Okay. Well, I'll kick it off. Um, on question number three, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you said we asked, what do you see as the three major challenges for your office over the next term? Uh, one of your responses was in operations, and we need to bring the constable office in the 21st century. Um, how do you, what's wrong with it now, and what do you plan to do? Right now, the way I see it and the way I understand things, uh, I don't know if it's going to change, but right now we're on different reporting systems within the county. We all have the same mission as county law enforcement, and I kind of want to bring some of the stuff we do in Harris County into what we do in Montgomery County. And one of the things we have is a centralized uh, dis call dispatching system that dispatches all the different agencies to calls, and that's tied into a reporting system, which each which each agency can enter reports into, and everybody has access to view it. You and what? Uh, yes, in Harris County we do. Yes, okay. and, and that's what, that's kind of what I'm hitting on right there. Uh, we need to bring more of that. It's Montgomery County, I believe, uh, so we have a more cohesive law enforcement unit so our constables know what the sheriffs are doing, our sheriffs know what our constables are doing, because we're all working together at the end of the day uh, in law enforcement. And uh, by having separate systems and separate, separate reporting systems, we're not being transparent to one another, and if we can't be transparent to one another as professionals, uh, we're not going to be able to do that for the public. So. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm going to go to question number four uh, for starts. Uh, in reading through, and this is a, a theme that you've got throughout uh, a number of your answers there, you're talking about the uh, need to increase patrol presence. Uh, you indicate, I guess by low workforce, you imply that mm -hmm. there's an understaffing issue yes, sir. in the Constable Ford office, improve public safety. Um, of course, the primary responsibilities of a constable in Texas, according to the Constitution, is to um, provide the bailiffs and serve, process the papers. Yes, sir. All of those things seem to be over and above uh, mm -hmm. those functions, those primary functions. And so I guess I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. Why would that be something you would want to grow the constable's office into rather than relying on the sheriff's office. Why grow the constable's office versus grow the sheriff's mm -hmm. office? Well, the bigger picture on that, what I'm trying to get across right there, isn't necessarily growing the constable's office for the sake of growing the constable's office. It's to be there for the sheriff's office. The sheriff's main duty is to, uh, for the jail and to serve uh, unincorporated areas of the county for patrol and investigation. 
That's primarily what the sheriff's there for. The, act, the Office of Constable actually predates the Sheriff's Office in the Republic of Texas in 1836. Uh, it was one of the first law enforcement positions created and it's slowly gotten away from a, a, an at-large and a county system such as the sheriff is to a more precinct by precinct basis because their initial duties to the justice of the peace. Uh, we're, we're low staffed in the county period in that section for the sheriff's office. So what I'm suggesting is we'd be there for the sheriff's <coughs> office, uh, bless you, uh, we'd be there for the sheriff's office uh, when they need it because they're so low staffed right now. You're, and we're another county agency out there, another Montgomery County, you know, paid for agency. So uh, we need to be there to back up the sheriff's office and to make sure calls are being uh, picked up promptly and, uh, and we're not having a long wait time for calls. Uh, because another thing with that is when we have a long wait time for calls and someone's calling in a suspicious activity or a behavior that they notice uh, and they don't get a prompt response from a peace officer, they may not be willing to call back again and give a tip or a suggestion that something's wrong in their neighborhood because they don't trust the law enforcement agency is going to promptly respond. And all I'm suggesting with that is, is we're there to support our uh, local law enforcement agencies in terms of a patrol presence, because right now it's uh, it's pretty low staffed out there on the East County end. Okay, so if I were a county commissioner who I believe are the ones who set the staffing level, yes, sir. so to speak, or at least they set the budget. Yes. Uh, why would I choose to staff up the constable's office versus staff up the sheriff's office? What are the pros and cons of each? Pros and cons of each. Uh, it, that's a tough question to answer right there. That's why I asked it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, there's re there's really no pros. In, I mean, we both do essentially the same job, law enforcement related. Uh, constables are Texas peace officers, and we do have the authority to patrol and uh, provide law enforcement service for our county. What I'm trying to say is, we need to try to stretch our taxpayer dollars uh, for the constables office and support our sheriff's office in terms of patrol. Okay. So, what's your understanding? I, my understanding, Texas is a little unusual having sheriff and constable. Yes. Uh, so what's your understanding of why it's set up that way? Uh, it, my understanding is essentially how Texas was set up initially as a republic. That's how the constable's <coughs> office was created. It was created to serve the justice of the peace. And it was ultimately the, uh, I believe Stephen F. Austin appointed the first two law enforcement officers were actually constables. So that's where the origin of the constable's office comes from. And it's progressed to a thing where it's stuck to a precinct by precinct basis because our county started off so small and rural, you only had you know you'd only have one justice of the peace. So what's the why? What's the why? I didn't hear why. I didn't hear an answer to why. Why we have a constable system is no no. Uh, why we have constable and sheriff system? Constable and sheriff system. Yeah. Uh, the why is it two con not one? Well, the constables are in charge of serving civil process and bail they bailing for the justice of the peace corps. And the sheriff's responsible for the jail uh, and uh, unincorporated patrol. You're stating what? County. You're stating what? You're not stating why. Uh huh. Well, I don't have an answer. Okay. So, I, yeah. yeah. I just, okay. Yeah. I, I, that's that's my understanding of it. I don't have an answer as okay. to why. Okay. Set up that that's way. fair. That's fair. Let me. If I have more time, can I? Oh yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. Let me jump back to what the last part of what he said. What mm -hmm. I heard him say is, Commissioner Court, why should go with sheriff or constable and our heard you say, I wanted to stretch tax dollar, Pat Pears dollars um, in the sheriff's, in the constable's office. I didn't know what that meant. What that meant is uh, we're paying for two law enforcement services essentially as taxpayers. Okay. So we should maximize the product we're able to serve our community with by assisting the sheriff's office because the constable's office how it's is, not, it's not, uh, yes sir. How is yeah. that max, how is growing, adding staff to mm -hmm. the constable's office Growing taxpayers' dollars, it's 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 or growing the benefit from the standard dollars. I mean, I, I, I hear it as I'm growing dollars, but I'm. Uh, but, uh, but that's I, not I, 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 must, I must have misspoke, and we're going down a different tangent okay. with that. Okay. So I'm just trying to provide the maximum level of uh, service and public safety we can okay. with the office we have in place. Okay. And if the commissioners allot us more positions. Uh, that would be great, but it won't hurt my feelings either because we have a job to do. And mainly if we're there and we're doing our uh, due diligence and our responsibilities to our community, that's what I'm big on. Okay. Okay, so obviously it's like serving papers is a big part of the yes, job. Uh, I know Precinct 1 
they also patrol the lake and they also provide school services. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any other additional things in that like that in Precinct 4? Precinct 4, the only thing I'm aware of is one contract with the Riverwalk uh, Property Owners Association. That's the only other thing. They don't provide uh, school coverage because you have New Caney ISD and Splendor ISD and both of those ISDs have their own police forces out there. Uh, yeah, so that, that's about it on that. There's nothing really special other than the civil process we serve and uh, patrol we conduct in that area. There's no lake in the lake septic. Right, right. So, the, so it, when you say you want to be more like the Harris County, uh -huh. why exactly do you uh, mean by that? I mean, I mean we need to bring technology into our police force because by bringing some technology into our police force that allows us to communicate better as county law enforcement agencies, uh, we're able to share information faster and get cases resolved faster, uh, which only enhance public safety. That's kind of the model I want to bring. It's more cooperation within our county law enforcement agencies. Even though we're separate entities as constables and as sheriffs, since we conduct both law enforcement functions, we should be communicating better in terms of uh, infrastructure. As far as solving cases, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I'll put it to you like this: if we're if we're on, if you're the sheriff's office and I'm the constable's office, and you're on one reporting system and I'm on another reporting system, and I'm trying to follow up cases and do research on cases, uh, and I I'd actually have to go to your department to request those. Whereas if we're all on one uh, reporting system, uh, we, we can share information in real time. We can do the research on the reporting system. To try and solve cases and uh, uh, things of that nature. Do they call y'all for backup right now? Is that the way it's? Uh, uh, since you're not on one system, does the sheriff say if they they have a shortage somewhere and they need more? In Montgomery County, yeah. Uh, I'm not aware because I work in Harris County, oh. so I, I'm not aware of how that issue works out. From what I hear, they try to pull their resources as best possible and help each other out. Whether it's the constable's office to the sheriff's office or constable's office to one of our local municipalities out there or vice versa. So how does it work in Harris County? In Harris County, uh, we're, we're kind of a special exception uh, in Precinct 4. We're one of the largest constables office in the state of Texas. Uh, we primarily function off of contract patrol where neighborhoods, uh, uh, mud districts and HOAs, they uh, they pay an officer's salary, a certain percentage of an officer's salary, whether it be 70% or 100% of their salary to keep them in a particular neighborhood. So if they have an emergency and they're working for another neighborhood, they won't leave that neighborhood? Not necessarily. Say it's a 70 or 30 contract, 30% of that just goes back to the county so they can answer calls elsewhere. But generally the idea is 100% you stay in that contract area where they're paying you to be. But if there's extenuating circumstances such as an emergency and an assist, uh, you know, uh, some kind of extreme circumstance. Where you, where you can actually leave, you know, for for safety issues and uh, to service that area that needs to be serviced. Okay. Curious about your schedule for your master peace office. Are you waiting till uh, 2017 because there's a, a certain amount of years it, of experience? Yeah, it, uh, it comes down to yeah, I'm just waiting on years of experience right now. At nine years, I'll be my master's peace officer. It's all set up on how many education hours you have, continuing training and education hours in law enforcement, and how many years of service you, hours you have. And that, uh, that certification right there can uh, normally take up to 15 or 20 years to accomplish. Okay. So. And I wanted to ask a couple questions about the, the dash and body cams. Mm -hmm. You said that you don't believe that all the videos should be available to individuals, but for folks that are in the video or subjects of the video or maybe family members of uh -huh. Would they have access to that? Uh, I believe so, yeah, if they request it. You, ha you have to have some type of reason to request the video. What I'm hitting at it towards that is uh, we're going to have more police officers in the future wearing these body cameras. Uh, that means we're we'll coming into your homes when you guys call us out to your homes. Mm -hmm. Do you really want that video of the interior of your home or your property in the hands of somebody who, doesn't, who shouldn't have a right to that video? Yeah. That's kind of what I'm hitting on with that. Okay. And SB... Uh, 158, one of the very last lines in that bill says that no police officer will be required to make a statement until, he, until he's had a chance to review the video. So can you think of any reason why that same protection is not afforded to the general public? Uh, that's a good question. It's a new law and I have to re I totally review it. So, I mean, it's well, pretty that, extensive. That's, that's yeah. not the question. 
Yeah. My question. It's my turn. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, no, I'm just, what, he didn't answer your question. Well, what I'm trying to answer is without looking at the law in black and white and just hearing it from somebody, I, I don't want to make a blind assumption on that is what I'm trying to say. It is the question. It's not the answer. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah, the question is fine. Well, the, the answer, the answer is, is I haven't studied up because it, it is a new law and uh, I haven't studied up on it enough to give you an educated well, answer. We're going to have Yes, sir. I will. Yeah. What is your position on taking federal funds? Federal funds, my, my issue with federal funds is uh, it, it, it allows the federal government to control how we run our police agencies. Our police agencies, especially on a local level like our constables and our sheriff's offices, they're created for the people. Uh, I, I don't believe in it because it, it just creates that conflict of interest there to where they want, they, they have their finger on you almost uh, as in the, uh, let's see here, you guys talked about it. Uh, the Strong Cities Network. Uh, if, if they're giving us federal dollars, they, they can start to force us to implement th things like that uh, with the reprisal of we're going to pull federal uh, money from your agency to fund it. So and just by not taking that money, we're not, we're not placed under the thumb of them and we can put our focus back into our communities. Okay, just need a little overview here. Mm -hmm. um, you work Precinct 4, Harris County. Yes, sir. Geographically, is that basically uh, as large as Precinct 4 of Montgomery County? Or uh, is it overlap yeah, there? Or I'm not that? sure of the actual land mm -hmm. maps, but it's a larger population. Larger population. Yes. Uh, I think we have 90,000 in the East Montgomery County area, or just over 90,000. And in Precinct 4, I believe the population alone in the, within that precinct is well over a million. Do you know what the staff, how many is on staff at Precinct 4 in Montgomery County? In Montgomery County, I believe it's uh, 28 full-time, 15 reserve right now. And that's according to the Constable's website currently. So, Does that include the administrative staff? Uh, administrative staff, I believe they have an additional four or five. Four or five administration. Okay. Uh, transparency, uh, question number one, you, your answer on transparency. We need a transparent Constable office. Do you have any reason to believe that it's not transparent now? Uh, one of the things is is connecting with your community and let them know what you're doing out there. And when I decided to run for a constable, uh, certain things started to happen, which I'm excited about. Uh, they have a website now, a public website you can go to and actually file complaints, uh, request information, request patrols and narcotics tips and things of that nature. They didn't have it. They didn't have that before, so that's very recent. So uh, that's one thing I'm excited about. And, I couldn't tell if that was a yes or a no. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm sorry. I'm trying to explain it too. Yeah, so fine. yeah, I, 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 I'll keep the answer simple. Too, that's fine. So, yeah. We like. I like explanations. Yes. The uh, you say that uh, Montgomery County Precinct Four Constable budget has gone from to the, the head of the department. I'm assuming is what you're. <coughs> that's what. Yes. God bless you. That's what I'm referring to. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh, the head of the department is now going from 91,000 in 2009 to an estimated 122,000 in 2015, and uh, 2016 was going to 126,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and then down below, you said you would vow to freeze your salary and not accept pay increases for yourself. Uh, could you uh, give us just a, a, an overview of that? I mean, how, how does that correlate with other um, entities? With other entities, uh, how it correlates is right now we have a we have a bunch of agencies with high department head salaries. I started looking at what other counties similar to the size of Montgomery County uh, provide for their uh, constables in terms of uh, heads of sa uh, head salary. And for the head salary, salary is the constable, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about here is the the constable salary. Uh, in Fort Bend County, they're all, about 100000 larger than Montgomery County. The family median income is higher, 87000 compared to 69000 And as of 2014, their constables are still at around ninety-one dollars to $94,000 a year for their head of salary. We've increased this almost 40% since 2009 for our heads of office for this particular office. And I'm get, and I, I don't want to assume or guess, but the commissioner set the pay raises, so I imagine all the county uh, heads are get the same pay raise as well too. Uh, we can play, by, by freezing the salary, I want the money to go back to our two most valuable resources. Our two most valuable resources 
is the community and our peace officers. By providing such a lavish increase to our department heads, we're doing nothing about staffing our departments or even offering competitive wages to keep experienced peace officers within our agencies that know our areas and, uh, and are able uh, to patrol uh, better than, say, a, a new recruit would be able to. So that's where I believe we should start putting our resources instead of at the top. We need it to go throughout our agency. I've gone way over, but I got to mm -hmm. yeah. follow up, and then I'll skip. I'll, I'll give my next time up. Is this going to be a increase for you? Obviously, I would think it would be from from Harris County. Uh, In terms of salary, uh -huh. yes, it would. Yeah. And you would freeze your salary for twelve years. Um, no, 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 I only, only have a four-year term. I'm not, I, I'm not the king or anything but like you, that. Did you say so. you were going to limit your number of terms? You for term limitation? Uh, I, I am. So because I'm for, uh, and this is kind of getting off uh, out, out there a little bit, but uh, I believe everybody should have a chance to serve in their county government. I believe that would represent the people more if there were certain, if there were term limits for our offices. That way, everybody would have a chance to serve. And we wouldn't have complacency at the heads of our office. You only freeze it for one term. What do you, no, I freeze it. Uh, I freeze it for every term. The, the okay. salary, right, the salary right now, I, I don't agree with it at all for that size of agency. They're almost making as much as the heads of office in Harris County. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm from a working class family. My dad worked two jobs when we moved to Montgomery County to help support my family. And, and it's still like that out there on the East End. It's a it's a very rural area in some parts, and it's a very poor area in some parts. And I just don't think that type of you know pay increase continually represents our area. Would you so, reduce it? Would I reduce it? If I was able to, I could. So I don't know how. I don't even know how the logistics of that would work uh, with the commissioner's board. But yeah, I'd be open to that. Now that we're on this time, where were we? <laughs> um, Okay, well, that's like two or three of my questions I was going to ask. Oh, I yeah, yeah, turned it and turned it. Uh, you said in here that, um, I'm trying to find it, I believe it's question number four. Mm -hmm. uh, some communities in Precinct 4 are not being adequately served due to low workforce. Um, are, are we sure about that? Or, or maybe, are they just more efficient than what they have compared to other precincts? Is that what you've heard? Or? I, I, I live in Roman Forest. There's a community that backs up to Roman Forest called King's Colony. Uh, it's a large community of uh, uh, mainly uh, Hispanic people. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of crime that goes on in that area that I hear from around from my community. And I also hear the activity on the weekends regularly between the gunshots and the loud music out there. That area doesn't get serviced, and that area falls within Precinct 4. It doesn't get serviced. Uh, the only time police will actually go out there is if somebody from within that community calls with a concern, and most of those people living within that community don't want to call the police out there because they don't want them to interfere. So uh, that's just one area that we're not serving. Uh, I believe that we, the way we could be. Uh, the Roman Forest Police Department, uh, they don't do much with that over there because it's not a part of their uh, incorporated city. It falls under the unincorporated area, which falls under the sheriff or the constable to take care of. So that, that's one of the personal experiences I have. There's not regular patrols out there in the area. Like I said, every weekend you get gunshots coming from that same area, which, you know, eventually what goes up comes down. So. Okay. Um. Okay, we, I think Larry brought up uh, transparency before, mm -hmm. um, and you were all for allowing total transparency. Does that include maybe putting checkbooks online? Checkbooks? Like how? Uh, that you're writing checks on, um, as far as your department, so the public can view that. Yeah, I mean, it, it it, if it doesn't interfere with some kind of legality or anything like that, like I'm, I'm not totally certain it, it would or not. I'd be for that. I mean, it's a public office. You know, certain information should be made available. You should know what we're spending our money on. Right. Okay. Okay, first of all, I think we got first time around. Thank you for serving in Harris County. You, you oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, serve in Montgomery County, but that's what you're trying to achieve here. Um, but when you, when anybody takes on 
uh, runs against an incumbent, that always implies that there's something the incumbent is doing that you feel you can do better, or that somebody something the incumbent is not doing that should be done. Mm -hmm. Of course, you touch on some of those things in question one, the main reasons you're running for office, and uh, the community, the transparency, the accountability, and then also in uh, question, I guess it's three, uh, the three major challenges, the growth, the operations, and the, the budget. But could you put those in the context of how, how we would expect to see Precinct 4 run differently than it is now, the things that you think there's that need to be improved? I want to focus more on community policing at Precinct 4, getting out into our communities and actually patrolling them, rather than uh, running a lot of you know highway interdiction and things of that nature. Because uh, <coughs> patrol in our communities, uh, it doesn't eradicate crime. But being visible to our public, that's what we're there for, we're public safety officers. So if someone's got a problem, they can flag us down. Or we can, you know, by uh, high visibility patrol, we actually deter and displace crime that way too. And move some of the crime out of our area uh, into another one that we can start to service as well too. Uh, that's where I mainly want to put our focus, is back into the community. I want to get back more to the old school way of policing and being in touch with our communities and creating relationships uh, with our different neighborhoods within Montgomery County because it's still kind of spaced out there on the east end. Uh, it's starting to get densely populated now with some of the new subdivisions such as Valley Ranch and Tavola backing up the Roman Forest. But it's important to get out there and let our public know uh, what we do as a constable's office and uh, what we're able to do for them public safety wise by going out and patrolling our neighborhoods. Uh, does that answer your question? So did, did I hear by your answer that you're, you kind of think the current, the, the, the district currently is doing more traffic yeah, stops than neighborhoods? Yeah, highway interdiction. That yeah, I, that's, that's what I believe. Yeah, everybody I talk to lives in different cross sections of county. They really don't see a lot of the constables of cars. And, and I mean, it's not a large agency either, and it's a very large county. Uh, but still, I think we need to put our focus back into our neighborhoods because of the growth we're experiencing out there uh, so our communities can feel safer knowing we have law enforcement watching out for them. Okay. Well, of course, 90% of the case, 98% of the cases, uh, law enforcement is reactive. They come on their call, not mm -hmm. more, more so than preventing. And uh, so... Again, this gets back into that's not one of the primary functions of the constable's office, and so you're basically wanting to grow with that function. Yes, sir, yeah. Uh, I believe it's important just because the sheriff, as of right now, it's so low staffed, and we're still another county law enforcement agency, and instead of being just so broken up and divided over we're, we're the sheriff's office and we're the constable's office, working together so we can maximize the, uh, the effort we put towards our community. Uh, you know, I, I don't want it to be a deal where the sheriff primary controls this area, but there's no one from the sheriff's office able to pick up a call. So we're just going to ignore that area uh, and wait for one of them to come free when one of our guys can go out there and service that area or patrol that area as well. Okay. Right. Are you familiar with um, both keepers? With, uh, yes, uh, somewhat. That you know, we adhere to the Constitution. Uh, you know, when I got sworn in as a peace officer. Uh, swore to uphold our United States and our Texas constitutions. Well, no, it's not uh -huh. the oath of every every peace officer. It's it's an organization. Okay. Uh, that that asks uh, military and peace officers to mm -hmm. agree to a ten point statement. Uh, are you familiar with are you, the organization? The CSPOA is that what we're talking about? The Coalition Sheriff's Peace Officers Association. A little bit different. Okay. A little bit different? Okay. Can you explain more to me about it? Or? Well, um, yeah, it basically it's, I'm not going to shoot at a citizen mm -hmm. without, you know, court, you know, saying to do so, basically, and um, not arrest them without a warrant, not hold them without a, a Probably charge. Probably cause, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the whole, there's a list of 10 of those items. Uh -huh. So, um, I would, you know, you obviously haven't, aren't familiar with it, yeah. which is, uh, it's not your fault, but uh -huh. you know it's uh, it's it's one of those things where it would, I would think we would want our peace officers to be aware of. Yeah, <clears throat> there is a lot of pressure by peace officers and military mm -hmm. uh, higher ups to tell people not to um, join the organization, not to sign that 
agreement. Mm -hmm. um, but because then you know the, the the high up says do X and you know then you know it's a just it's that whole chain of authority you know who, mm -hmm. who are you going to go to? But I think it's something to look into. Oh yeah, definitely. And I'd like to know yeah. your opinion on whenever you figure it out. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely provide that opinion to you when I look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't have enough education about that right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do agree with upholding our uh, our end of the deal and uh, upholding our constitutions. Uh, that's the, one of the reasons I think went into law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe for the most part we do that and we do a good job of that as a whole. But there are outliers, but there's outliers in any type of career. Uh, but yeah, those things are important to me. I will check into that. Thank you. I think it's parallel with the CSPOA. Uh, it, it, that's, what it, that's what it was sort of sounding like. So, and I did sign the CSPOA agreement too. Why? So, I, yeah, I know. Uh, they, there was an issue of them uh, putting it on there, so I sent it two times. <laughs> All right. Um, how many officers are currently in precinct four? Uh, in Montgomery County, yeah, 28, uh, 15, 28 full-time officers, 15 reserve officers, and I, I believe I answered it earlier about four or five uh, clerical positions in precinct four, and that's according to their new website. So. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and do you know how many law enforcement officers in total in the county there are? Uh, in the county. Uh, well, a few, this was a few years ago. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, I believe, was the Sheriff's Office about 375 to 400 patrol deputies. It's probably increased since then. Right. Uh, okay. Each of the constables are pretty similar to the Precinct 4 Constables Office in terms of staffing. Okay. Um, on another topic, uh, is, do you believe law enforcement personnel should have access to uh, equipment or weapons that are not readily available, to, or well, sorry, that are not available to the public, that are illegal for the public to have. Uh, we talk about like fully automatic weapons and things of that nature. We don't use those at our hospital's office or anything like that. Uh, right, well, or, or in wraps or drones. In wraps, or, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't agree with the utilizing you know military equipment such as an M wrap, something that drastic, or even a drone. I don't agree with the drone programs we have and stuff like that. I think. Uh, there's too much gray area in those type of programs in terms of uh, w when they use that for and when they actually deploy that. We're doing that just for a, simply a public safety standpoint to try to locate somebody who's lost. That's one thing, but it's just I just feel it's too much of a gray area to put that in the hands of our law enforcement. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with the bill that Steve Toast put up, SB 1076, that didn't pass in 2013? firearms protection and it basically said that it would be a violation of state law mm -hmm. for state employees, state and local and sheriff and constable to assist the federal government in doing things that they deem to be unconstitutional. Like if the feds came and said, go get everybody's guns, it would be a violation of law for you to help them. So do you think that's uh, the intent in this CSPO resolution? It doesn't do. exactly say it. But it doesn't actually say it, but it alludes to it, so I do think that's one of the main driving points in that resolution. Okay. Well, and also. A question about, uh, on your question six, you talked about being a training provider. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that, that currently our constables go to somebody else to get trained? Yes. At yeah. that precinct, yes. Uh, at least according to T. Cole's website. So not other precincts? Uh, they could, yeah. There's only, uh, in my, uh, under my understanding, and this is according to the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, uh, they, they provide a list of training providers you can go to uh, to seek out law enforcement training. There's only two precincts, I believe, in Montgomery County right now that offer uh, constable precincts, aside from the sheriff's office, that offers training. I believe that's precinct three and either one or five, but precinct four is not a training provider. Was there any exchange of money involved in that? If you go somewhere else to get trained, do you have to pay them? Yes. Yeah. There, well, there can be. See, at our agency, we have a training division, and it's free of cost to our deputies and to outside agencies to attend as well. So smaller agencies who don't have necessarily the budget to send people to expensive training, they can send them to our training division for uh, free of cost. But you go to other people's training division for some of your training, huh? Are you uh, talking about Harris County? And, and, and I'm talking about Harris County. I'm talking about creating kind of a system like that where we can keep it in-house to keep our costs down as opposed to sending them out of, okay. out of the county or uh, sometimes even out of the state to attend training uh, as taxpayers' calls. Okay, where do you think the possibility for corruption resides in the county government, and what would you do 
or how would you handle it if you've got your apartment? Uh, checks and balances at the top. There's no checks and balances at the top of our county government. So, you know, corruption can corruption can occur. Uh, not saying that it is currently right now, but <laughs> but but it can. The, the opportunity is there for that. Uh, now, within our agency, handling things internally, if we found out about corruption, uh, uh, there's internal. Uh, say at our Harris County Constable's Office, there's actually an internal affairs division that investigates complaints brought against police officers and wrongdoings against police officers. And uh, they're able to dismiss a lot of unfounded charges that way, but they're also able to weed out some people who are doing some undesirable things. And, uh, and I believe they have a, a system set up in place. I'm not sure I'm not over there right now, Montgomery County Constable's Office. But if they don't, that's something I would strongly advocate for uh, because we need to weed out the bad ones. One bad apple could spoil the whole bunch, you know, and it's, uh, it, it doesn't provide a good look to our community when we have instances of internal corruption and things of that nature uh, and, uh, and ethical, uh, unethical decisions we make uh, uh, can be a problem and a detriment to our community. I'm for building a stronger trust and relationship with our communities. We're just over 30 minutes and we got 35 minutes and 35. Okay. We have about two minutes left. I've got one quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, you, 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 you said that from 2011 to 2013 you served as Precinct 53 Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, 2011 to 2013, yeah. That's a, a one, two year term. You're very great putting that on there. <laughs> well, at the time I was looking to get more involved with politics and just find out more about politics and the Republican Party is more aligned to my uh, core beliefs than the Democratic Party. So I reached out just for literature and things of that nature to learn more about what's going on in my, uh, my government in the county. And uh, Dr. Wally Wilkerson told me that there was a vacancy within that spot. So I kind of threw myself into it to learn more about it. And it was a rewarding experience, but it was also challenging at the time too. There's a lot of uh, at the time I served, and uh, part of the reason why I didn't continue is there was a lot of, uh, I don't want to talk about it really on camera, but family health problems and stuff in my family. And plus, uh, I was going into college at the time towards the tail end of that, too, to finish up my degree. So, But it was a rewarding experience to serve. Thank you for serving. Well, thank you. What's your, um, <clears throat> don't tell him it's too bad, I'm trying to talk him out of becoming <laughs> one. Um, what's your thought about open carry versus concealed? Uh, I, I think they're both great. I mean, uh, I would like to see um, constitutional carry. I think it's a shame that we're one of only six states right now that don't have an open carry law. Uh, uh, right. so, so I'm favorable for the open carry and, uh, and both concealed carry. Now under the new law, uh, it's just a handgun license. It's not a concealed handgun license anymore. So it gives you the opportunity to both carry concealed and open if you so choose to do so. So I'm, I'm, I'm for it. There's a lot of law enforcement that's skeptical about it because, uh, you know, openly armed people in the public area and stuff like that, they're not used to it. But uh, I really don't see a problem with it because most of our people who are licensed handgun carriers, uh, they're very responsible and law-abiding citizens. So. What, what's your position on the public's right to record police or other government <laughs> officials on public property? On public property, uh, they can't. <laughs> I mean, well, how do you feel about it? How do I feel about it? I'm for it. So, I mean, I think I think all of our politicians should wear body cameras. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we put a lot of focus on the police just, wearing it. But I mean, I like to see all the county commissioners wear one too. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm for that, especially if it's on public property. Now, when you get into a deal with private property in somebody's home and dwelling and stuff, you know. There's a time and place for everything, but uh, public property I'm favorable for, yeah. Okay. Let's see. okay. And unless, I'll put a caveat on that because it's law enforcement side, unless it's an active crime scene where there's some kind of evidentiary value of what's being filmed and maybe some type of, you know, gore, something somebody shouldn't just be advertising out there. That's the only caveat I'll, I will provide to that in a public place. So give me an example of what you're talking about. Uh, like a murder scene or something of that nature. So mm -hmm. what's what's okay. the value of filming something like that? You know. So. so what happens if somebody does inadvertently take a picture or, or record 
you know, that scene, uh -huh. what would be your position if they, whether they did it inadvertent or not? Uh, you'd have to consult with the district attorney's office on that because there is evidentiary value of even even though they don't work for the police off, office or anything like that of what they actually captured on camera. Mm -hmm. So. So what about the the cop that's arresting somebody and his friend is filming it and the cop says, "Turn it off or I'll arrest." Oh, that's that's totally. Different. I'm I'm talking about like extreme circumstances. I'm for that if they want to document an arrest. So be okay. it. So because I believe 99 percent of the time. They're going to see a police officer making a lawful arrest. Okay. So, okay, okay, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who is the constable's boss? Is it the sheriff? Is it the governor? Uh, what's the chain of command? The chain of command is the people—the people who vote him in office. Uh, there, uh, in terms of county government, the only ones you're really answering to is the commissioner's court because they're the ones who set your budget and they're the ones you're trying to go to to a lot. Uh, either more deputies or funding for certain equipment and things of that nature. But ultimately, our boss is the people who vote us into office and the people we serve as peace officers. Okay, but now I don't live in Precinct 4, but if I did, I couldn't go into your office and say, hey, I need you to do this. You would, you know. Uh, basically, what you're saying is, yes, you're answerable, to, you're accountable mm -hmm. to the people. But as far as taking commands, you don't take commands from the people. Let me go specific here. The, um, I'm sure you're familiar with Governor Abbott's uh, letter to Sheriff Valdez in Dallas County. No, familiar, no. familiarize me with it. Okay, so. well, uh, Sheriff Valdez took a position, uh, it's called a sanctuary city position, very okay. similar to what the sheriff in San Francisco, who just got fired, mm -hmm. uh, did. And uh, Governor Abbott sent uh, a letter to, specifically to Sheriff Valdez, amongst the, the quotes on there. We, Sanctuary city policies like those promoted by your recent decision to implement your own case-by-case -case immigrant detention plan will no longer be tolerated in Texas. Now, does governor, what enforcement power does Governor Abbott have for constable's office if that were letter were written to you? So what? Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, saying we're going to enforce a sanctuary city, have a sanctuary. I mean, that, that's a specific case, but the bottom line yeah. is what I'm wondering is what authority does Governor Abbott have to say how sheriff runs his department, how a constable runs his department, and so forth. That's a great legal question. Uh, unless legislation gets passed, I wouldn't imagine he could really dictate what what the constable, what the sheriff does, unless the con or current constable or sheriff is doing something unlawful. So. That would be my answer for that. I mean, okay. that's the best answer I can give you. So, as a court of public opinion on this, as best I can tell, I just wanted to get uh -huh. some viewpoints from you, some opinions. Yeah. So I would, ma I would imagine, since we're being voted in by the people, they're trusting us to make the proper decision, and you know, they're also voting the governor too. But I don't think the governor has authority over a constable's office or a sheriff's office per se. It's a separate <coughs> office. Okay. One more question. Two minutes. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, so there's this principle called power corrupts and absolute power absolutely corrupts. Mm -hmm. You want to grow the department. Um, you know, there is a growing level of mistrust for government at at least certain levels. Mm -hmm. um, how big is too big? When when does police force you know how, how much police force is too much? Yeah, well, that's that's an interesting question to ask. I don't I don't have an exact number of how many officers is too much. All I know is the population growth that's happening out there in East Montgomery County and how sparsely uh, staff we are on the sheriff's office side and the constable side, and even our local municipalities out there. They're very small police departments with you know not a whole lot of funding for uh, a lot of police officers. Uh, so I would like to see more patrol in the area because with the growing population we're going to have a problem keeping up with calls and then people are going to start getting angry about response times to their calls and, and we, in general in law enforcement you work on a priority system in terms of which calls get answered first, the higher priority serious, more serious calls get answered before say a car that got, your car that got broken into last night. But you know that car got broken into last night that's still a very important issue but you know, waiting hours for a deputy to come out there and investigate that 
you know, I like to reduce response so time. In yep. Harris County, mm -hmm. if you're in the neighborhood and somebody's there's a robbery going on over here and mm -hmm. there's the police report to do in the neighborhood or something. Yeah. I mean, are they going to pull him from that neighborhood and assist in the robbery if he's the... Well, if there's an active robbery, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if we see something going on, we're police officers. It's our duty to act, even though we're in a particular neighborhood. And like I said, uh, contract patrol, I mean, uh, a lot of the contracts are 70, 30 contracts, things of that nature, where 70% of your salary is paid for by the community. Uh, by that particular neighborhood, and 30% of it's paid for by the county, meaning uh, you know 30% of your time can be dedicated to outside patrol of that uh, neighborhood. But yeah, if there's an active scene or a serious scene or something where somebody is getting hurt or property is getting stolen from somebody's house, that does take priority, and those resources do do go to where they need to go to. So. Okay. Um, that's good. Okay, so if you would like five minutes to close, you're welcome to it, or if you I like this, want us to I like this Q&A, <laughs> so let's, keep going let's, let's just keep going it. around. Okay. Um, so, at, you don't patrol schools, but uh, you, know, you do interact with the community a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, one of the recent issues that have come up recently online is this video of the classroom uh, where the um, official turned over the school desk, right, with the girl. Okay. How, was that wrong? Was the police officer wrong in that situation in any way? Uh-huh. How could it have been better? Even if it wasn't wrong, yeah. could it have gone better? Uh, I hate, the thing is, I hate the armchair quarterback situations, but that one does look, it does look very bad on, on face value. There are other angles of that video, though, too, that show the student actually hitting the officer, and there's a whole other incident, and we, we have to keep in mind when we see some of these videos now and stuff, too, uh, we're looking at the tail end of a situation that, you know, Police officers aren't just put in the classrooms. We're not just, we don't just sit in classrooms and watch the teacher teach. You know, that'd be very intimidating, for not only for the teacher, but the students, and when we conducive it to a learning environment. Uh, so there was a whole situation that occurred uh, before that that made the teacher or the administrator in that school call that police officer in there. And sometimes we don't make the most perfect decisions and everything, and things could be handled better. Uh, but you know, when, until you're faced with that certain confrontation or certain action, it's tough to say. But uh, it did look like it went a little bit overboard. But there are, like I said, there are other angles too. Uh, someone, another student, shot that same video, and you can actually see better that she did start to strike the police officer when he was telling her to get out of the seat. So that kind of changes the dynamic on things. Okay. To follow up a little bit on, on Dale's question, when Governor Abbott sent you that letter, is there a, is there any control that the state legislature or the governor has on your funding? On our funding? Yeah. Uh, I'm really not aware of that. That's a very good question, and I have to study that more. I believe our funding is dependent on the, our, 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 the county commissioners and what they allot for each office to run their office. So all they can do really is plead with you and maybe go try to backdoor to the commissioners or something like that. Huh? Possibly, like I said, I, I need it. I would need to educate myself more on that process right there. That's a very good question, though. Uh, are, are you more or less older than thirty? How old are you? I'm almost thirty. I'm twenty nine years old. <laughs> Me too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Times how much? <laughs> uh, one twenty. Um, well, I'll tell you, I'm just about out to uh, anybody else. You talked us out? Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get another chance. Okay, how about, how about a simple math one? Over 5,000 continuing education hours. Now, if you look at 40 hour a week, five days a week, the typical mm -hmm. work week, that's about two and a half years of continuing education hours. Yeah, 600 of that is academy which wasn't funded for by a county, it was funded for by myself. I went through a pri private police academy, the North Harris Police Academy. So I paid for that for myself. Uh, others are in service training, things like accident investigation and reconstruction. 
that's a very heavy math intensive uh, thing to learn right there to be able to prove up certain cases and causations of accidents. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, a large majority of that training is also converted back from my college education to all uh, college hours I receive uh, that I obtain on my own. Uh, they convert that into training hours as well through the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. And I thought continuing education had a little bit different slant, because, but anyway, that's that's basically you know about two and a half years worth of yeah continuous full time. So I, I think I have around like 3,000 continuing education hours just from my college education degree and another uh, 1,800 hours from actual in-service training and 600 of those hours or just over 600 of those hours are from the police academy itself. Okay. Um, let, me, let me still one back here. Um, mm -hmm. Since there seems to be an increase on police officers, at least nationwide, I don't know about here, what the numbers are, the metrics. Um, when it gets down to it, uh, there's kind of safety in numbers. Is it better to have one or two officers in a patrol car in one? Uh, for high crime areas, I could see the need and the necessity for two officers in a patrol car. But if you look at the FBI UCR statistics, a police officer is when they're uh, killed uh, in the line of duty and they're murdered, they're more than likely murdered by ambush. So that means that person's calculating a time and a place to kill those police officers. And we've seen that in New York uh, uh, recently here where they got where the uh, guy gunned down the two New York City police officers and they you know they essentially had no time to react. He he calculated a time and a place to do that and there was no time and place for them to react because he knew he had a mission. He was he knew what he was out there to do and they didn't. So uh, I can see the necessity for two officers in cars, but in terms of if we're talking about covering a patrol area that, uh, that doesn't have a large patrol presence right now, uh, one person per car would provide a maximum uh, level of service to our community, provide more officers to be able to pick up calls and to provide different police functions for our communities. So are you more of an administrator, a trainer, an investigator? Uh, in my current capacity? No, no, no. In your, uh -huh. your personality, your strengths, your weaknesses. I mean, what's, uh, or, I'm, I'm, yeah. No, I mean, there's more of you know, an officer, uh, you know, tell us, help us understand your particular niche. My niche? Uh, I, I'm more of an, uh, in my current capacity, I'm more of an investigator and I'm just a, I'm just a regular cop. I'm not, I'm not one of these guys who have 20 years as a top level administrator, supervisor, or anything like that. I'm not asking about your uh -huh. experience. Uh -huh. I'm being asking about your natural bent. Oh, natural personality. bent? Natural personality. Bent personality. Uh, I imagine I'm more of a leader myself. So uh, a lot of the guys look to me at my work uh, for help and answers. And, you know, I try to my best to help them out and to give them guidance. So I see myself more, you know, in a leadership role or, administ you know, an administrator type. But, you know, kind of kind of across the board, I don't know, that's kind of a, you know, <laughs> never thought of it much <laughs> like that, so that's a good question. All right. All right, so that'll wrap it up. We appreciate you.